to take a stand. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. In some ways, I feel like the sixth wife of Henry VIII. You know what happened if I've before. So you know what may be coming for the sixth wife. But I have no intention of giving up to that kind of it. Tonight, I am UNC and I'm proud of it. Tonight, we are UNC and? Let me hear you. We are UNC and proud. I thank you all very much. Um, I did not intend to be here this evening because of some other commitments, but the Lord is good always. And I finished those commitments and I was able to, to join you. And I'm so glad that I did. So let's hear it for our speakers who came before me. Let's hear it for Senator Damian Lyda. Fearless, UNC warrior. Let's hear it for Dr. Gopi Singh, always the legend himself. Let's hear it for Senator Jayanti tonight, rocked. But what can I say about the one and only Arnil Roberts? <laughs> Senator Roberts, I wish I could speak some of the things you speak. So when I hear you, I say, go boy, go brave, go brave, Arnil, go brave. And also, well, he lying again. I think the lion outdid himself tonight. Let's hear it. And the one and only Senator Wayne Mark. Always on spot. Always ready to go. But we must also give it up to our two chairs today. Um, <laughs> Councillor Kenman Phillip. And the uh, Vice Chairman of our Youth Arm, Shanique Piper. Please give it up. And if I were to call out all of you who have been giving us such great support tonight, Let's hail out the crew from Sandy Grandi. The last time I spoke, they said, but leader, we feeling hurt. You didn't hail us out. A good crew, give them a round of applause. They have promised they will bring back the Sandy Grandi Corporation to the UNC. I also want to hail out the crew from Komoto Manzalina. I didn't forget you. And um, there's a young man who's with us tonight. His name is Adam Ghani. You may or may not know him, but he's a social media warrior. He's out there on the social media platforms day in and day out. So I want to thank him. Thank you, Adam, for the hard work you're doing. And all the other activists, all right, St. Joseph, I see you. I see you. <laughs> Safras and Ahmed St. Joseph. And tonight we also have the special pleasure of Alderman still in chase, coming from Diego Martin, together with his executive member. They've joined us. And if I did not call you, is because I have a short time, but I still love you all very much. And I thank you for joining us, all of you. Our General Secretary, Peter Kanhai, <laughs> DJ Tank and his crew, William Archie and his crew, and um, Anil, I don't need any prompting. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and. Um, Kivan, thank you. Thank you for all the work you do for us. Vishnu Kun Kun, thank you very much from your team as well. I think our campaign manager, Fee Rose, is here as well. Yes, give it up. The troops are gathering. The storm clouds are gathering. And the UNC is ready to take them on anytime, any place, anywhere. Now, you would have heard all these uh, 
speakers tonight. And I spoke to you before about a Gestapo state. And tonight they reinforced what is happening in our beloved country. It is a Gestapo state, it is a police state. And the only way we can stop that is that we must unite and fight them. Tim, did I recognize you? You're looking so sad. <laughs> the legend himself. So I wouldn't spend long with you tonight, except to say that everything I have been saying is coming to pass. I predicted that they will collapse the economy. I predicted there will be suffering and starvation throughout the land. And not because they are wicked, that might be part of it, but because they are totally incompetent. Totally incompetent. On top of incompetence, they are corrupt. Corrupt. This is the most corrupt government our country has ever had. Most corrupt. And this man wanted to talk about how I look in. But Rowley, you could never look like that. You would never look so. The man just jealous. Just jealous. Forget me and take care of the people of our country. So whilst the other speakers told you about they want to raise the, um, the gas prices and so on, and already food prices escalating, I call for one-time uniform grant for children. You remember that? Last time I spoke, I said, look, give the children a one time, meaning this time, in time for school opening, so a parent doesn't have to decide if to put a plate of food on the table or if to buy a uniform. So all these millions you're spending on all these people you're bringing that Rudy talked about, take the money and give it to our children. Give them that one time uniform grant. How hard is that? How difficult that? Take some of that money for us paying rent. You pay them rent. Take some of that money you give into Stuart Young family. Use some of that for a one-time uniform grant and help the children. You have never, ever helped the children in this country. Never. And how dreadful and horrible can you be on the day that school is to open? That is the day you're going to send up the fuel prices. That is the day that's shameful. But it's not dokey and shameful. I mean, it, it is beyond, it is beyond outrageous. thinkable, outrageous. Every word you could think about that is what that is. How can you suffer the children? You know, the Bible tells us, suffer the little children to come unto me. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Give them the one-time uniform grant rally. I, I, I don't want to beg you, but I implore you. Give to the parents that one-time uniform grant. I mean, see, I see everybody shaking their heads. Every parent will agree for that help at this point in time. So let me just uh, talk to you a bit of our party business to put you on alert. I already put you on alert. We are ready anytime, any place, anywhere. In the coming weeks, we shall be getting together to convene our parliamentary arm. We had withheld holding these meetings for a while because of the restrictions, but now we can resume parliamentary arm meetings. Further, our teams will be going out to the various constituencies to talk about the holding of constituency executive elections. It is time. They will come to you to talk about the holding of our women's arm elections. We'll come to you about the youth arm elections, and we will come to you for the national executive elections. These are due, and now is the time that we can put these together. And to all those comers, I promise you, manos y manos, man to man, or woman to woman, I will take on all comers, and I will beat every one of them. And I say this not because I'm immodest, I am boastful, I'm whatever. I say it because I have a track record, others have spoken to you, and you all know it. I have a track record, but you know what is more important than just a track record? What is more important is the love I have for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. What is more important are the policies 
that we put into place before, policies which we shared with them, but they're so malicious, wicked, spiteful. They will not take anything we say. They feel they can govern alone, and obviously they have failed at every single thing. I speak as I've told you. It took COVID pandemic to open the COVID hospital. Shame. Pandemic. A world-class hospital, which we built. And we built it not just for healthcare for you in Trinidad and Tobago. We built it to earn revenue, and that's the problem we have now. We have no money coming in. Wade Mark told you about importing more fuel than we need, and you really have to ask why. But they're exporting some of the fuel that they're importing. You have no foreign exchange, but you're importing more than we need to export where and to whom? To whom? To whom are you exporting? Other countries can import their own. Why are we being middlemen? To import fuel, spending forex that you all would have spoken about that we don't have, and then going and sell it to someone else. And for how much? Discount prices? Whom? To sanction countries? Why are you doing that? So here we are on the issue of the fuel. I'm saying it's the policies of this government. Nothing to deal with earning revenue. A country cannot run. You run a home. If you don't earn what you will call an income, in uh, economics of the country, we talk about revenue, revenue, revenue. If you don't earn revenue, you can't run your household. You're bankrupt. You are bankrupt. So first what you'll do is you'll borrow. And we've seen them doing, well, first, you dip into your savings. They've taken billions of dollars out of the HSF, which we left that money there. They say we left the place dry, the treasury empty, lies, 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 lies. You've taken billions out of the savings, first of all. And in addition to that, you've borrowed billions of dollars. And you can't pay it back, so you borrow more to pay back the borrowings. So you have bankrupt this country. That's what you've done. And the taxes, you're right. Then you come to rob the taxpayer by piling tax upon tax upon tax. No revenue stream. So that hospital was, as I say, to create world-class healthcare for Trinidad and Tobago. And on top of that, it was to create two, about 2,000 jobs. 2,000 jobs. It's not what people are crying for now. We want jobs. We want jobs. Not one policy, not one announcement, nothing about what they will do to create jobs. Nothing. Nothing. So no revenue coming in and nothing to create jobs. All these young people coming out of school, out of university, at every level, there's not a job to go to. As MPs, and I'm sure our councillors, do people come to us every day, senators as well. Every day, what they want? They don't want a handout. They want a hand up. They want a job. It is a really sad thing when you see big men and women reduced to the state where they have to beg for a job, which is their right. So they have nothing to tell us what they will do to create jobs. On top of that, it took a pandemic for them to partly open the Debe UWI campus. UWI campus, state-of-the-art campus, that was the service south of the land from Point Fortin going all the way to Mayaro, south. So it will ease up the St. Augustine campus that more students could be taken up, given a chance at the St. Augustine campus to get an education, a tertiary education. You know, in tertiary education, when we were there, we surpassed our own target. Tell me, you remember the percentage? From 45%, we took it to 70%. 70%. Well, you would know what it is now because there's no gate, there's no money to pay the campus, to stock the campus, there's nothing left. So that South Campus was one to provide more spaces <coughs> for tertiary education in Trinidad. But secondly, 
It was also for education tourism. So I talked about a hospital for medical tourism. Create jobs and earn money. People from the Caribbean, the Caribbean would have come here, but they would have had to pay. You wouldn't pay, but they would pay. Same thing with that campus, UWI. Would have created jobs, spaces for children to go to get a tertiary education. And then those would have come from the Caribbean. They would have come right here to a first class UWI campus. Thereby, what would they do when they come here? Spend money. If from South, you know, they'll stop right over the road by the doubles people. From the smallest man to the biggest, the people rent out their spaces, they'll pay their fees, would bring in revenue for Trinidad and Tobago. So those are just two of the projects that we had in mind. We had the vision for the port of Trinidad and Tobago. Their plan is to what? Sell the port, privatize the port. We had the plan for the port of Spain hospital. They always cry in us down to say, oh, we only care about Coover Hospital. No. Jillian will tell you we have an entire plan for that Port of Spain hospital, state-of-the-art hospital. They boast, 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 and cry, cry us down. Up to now, they can't put up one brick for that Port of Spain block. Not one. All they do is talk. These days, we're into Ukraine and um, Russia. And they talk about NATO. This government is like NATO. No action, talk only. No action, talk only. That's what this government is about. Talk only. So my friends, as I close, I want to remind you the local government elections are due this year. Many councils are here with us. I want to advise you that we will be opening up nominations for persons to file to be candidates in the local government elections due this year. At our next executive meeting, which will be shortly, we shall make a decision as to the dates. So get your papers in order, get ready. We will announce the date for nominations for local government elections. As I said, we'll announce the dates for the women's army elections, the youth arms elections, and the constituency executive elections, and eventually the national executive elections. So these are the announcements I wanted to make here tonight. And also just to be with you, I, I just could not stay away. I just couldn't stay away, I couldn't stay away. So you had some powerful speakers tonight. They did us justice, so let's say it all together. We are UNC and we are proud. We are UNC. We are UNC. And Rowley, your days politically are numbered. Your days are numbered. And we are coming for you. We are coming for you and we will not stop. We will not give up until we get you out of office. Because you are the most dangerous man for Trinidad and Tobago. God bless you. Before I go, I will ask um, Deputy Leader Jill and John to join me. And Treasurer William Archie, if he's here. William. <laughs> William, come on this side, please. And tonight I ask you to join me in wishing both our officers happy birthday. And I say to them both, closer, I say to both of them, may you stay forever young. God bless you. <laughs>